This 120 inch projection setup for the lounge is gonna be freaking awesome. Oh no, I'm gonna fall. Like the mount separates from the I'm beginning to think this may have been a big mistake. This video is brought to you by Antlion Audio. Antlion's Mod Mic wireless microphone delivers best in class audio quality, 12 plus hours of battery life, and it magnetically mounts to almost any headphones. Get 15% off Mod Mic wireless and other Mod Mic products at the link below. Back in our old lounge setup, we had a super nice 120 inch Elon Vision tab tension screen. One of the nice things about that screen was that it was 4K capable. That is to say that the finish on it was fine enough that you could actually resolve those pixels. We were gonna just reuse the same one, but Elon Vision reaches out and they go, nah dog, you want the new 8K Evo reference screen. So what does that even mean? I don't know. Let's uh, flip it open. Uh, Oh, oh, I don't know if we were supposed to open it that way. No, I think probably not. That's a new one. It's got an Allen key in it, but it's not bent. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you probably saw our recent video on the Fancy Pants Epson Epic Vision laser projection TV setup, but there's a couple of reasons it doesn't quite work for our setup. And the biggest one is right over here. Our $30,000 LG Signature Z10 OLED. That is what we're gonna wanna game on. The projector screen comes down in front of the TV as a large format display for movies or gaming with a big group once we've all got our uh, vaccinations. P.S. Get your vaccination. Bill Gates told me to tell you. Man, these are some chungus brackets. So one thing to consider with this screen is we have 24 inches of black drop that's on the top of the screen. So 59 inches. I think it'd probably be like right there. So You're gonna have so many holes in this wall. Once we figure out whatever height we want the screen at, you can twist the little knob and that sets the like lowest it'll go. So when you click open all the way, it stops at that point. Oh, it's pretty heavy, Jay. You think we should just put it in with drywall anchors? What? So if you watched our Epic Vision video, you'll probably remember we couldn't find a stud. The stud finder said, oh, there's a stud here. Oh, there's a stud here. There's where the actual stud is. This will find the perfect spot in the middle. Yeah. So is this right? It just hangs off yeah. of these? You can mount it directly to the wall. You can mount it directly to the ceiling right. if you have like brick. Let's just measure how far this is. So it's nine feet. Okay. So maybe let's do eight feet. That way we have some wiggle room. All right, let's do it here. Okay. We got to mark center somehow. No! Three inches seem fine enough? Yeah. Linus is used to three inches. Da, 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 da. What are you trying to do? I'm just finding studs. Oi, ow. It's, can you get this off me? I quit. I haven't even told you the interesting part yet. The problem with steel stud, if we're mounting heavy screen, you can't just like put a deck screw into it, right? So what do you do? Oh, you got to get those stupid flangey things yeah. to go. Oh no. And the problem is steel stud is also not very wide. Yeah. So you got to hit it right on the spot. <laughs> you excited? No. The way the toggle anchor works is you actually twist it like this, put the whole thing through the hole, then you can kind of, see that? You can adjust it so it's vertical, so it aligns with your stud. You pull this little plastic tab and it kind of zips. And you see the zip tie teeth there? And then it holds it in close to the drywall. So you're actually screwing into this pre-threaded hole. That's a, that's a strong material here, super cool. It looks very weird, hey? <laughs> Stand on a chair, you say. You know this is a rolling chair, right? Are you trying to kill me? You weigh like 110 pounds, it's fine. Sorry, I've never actually used this. There's a button on the, that side, yeah. You gotta go this way, like the smallest amount. Oh. How about now? Oh, oh, oh. How about now? Oh boy. How about now? Are you drunk? I can't see it. <laughs> how about now? Uh, I am barely even touching <laughs> it. Okay, how about now? About the same, but you're on the other side now. What? <laughs> how much do you trust me? I mean, you did put extra holes in the wall last time. You're not wrong. <laughs> Oh, that's a stud, baby. <laughs> I can see it. Ooh. Okay. There we go. So yeah, we're definitely in the middle of the stud because I can't turn it at all. Nice. nice. First try. So you were saying uh, you wanted this to be more challenging and we should throw stuff at you, right? How about this oh, TPU look. pillow from LTTstore.com? Ah. Oh, oh. Moment of truth. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It's mint. Now for the projector itself, we reached out to Epson. This is the Epson 605 UB. And if we put it next to the dinky little thing we had in the lounge before, you could probably fit four of them inside this. It could eat them. And a huge part of why this thing is so big is the lens. It is a proper motorized unit with a 
huge range of lens shift, which allows the lens to actually shift the projected image around to accommodate a wider range of mounting options. You want your projector to be mounted right in line with the center of your screen, which in our case, that would require the projector to hang like five, six feet down from the ceiling, which would suck because you could easily hit your head on it when you're walking around. To combat this, most people end up mounting their projector up high, tilting it down to line up with where they want their screen to be, and then using Keystone to fix the weird angle and make the edges perpendicular. It's not ideal because keystoning is done digitally, which means their image will no longer be native resolution, which can hurt sharpness. And if you're gonna spend the money on an, a 4K projector, 4K or 8K resolution screen, the last thing you wanna do is go and add keystone to it. But with proper lens shift, we can have the projector just a few feet down from the ceiling and then shift the whole image without distorting it to line up with our screen. Now, this guy's rated for 2,600 lumens with both color and white output, but many reviewers say they saw an excess of 3,000 lumens in the brighter modes, which is sweet. Another thing that's cool is even though it's 4K enhanced, which means the actual projection chip is 1080p, but then it shifts over a pixel at twice the refresh rate, it's not DLP like our old projector was. So instead, this one uses Epson's own 3 LCD technology, which uses a prism to split the lamp or the LED light into R, G, and B, which is then passed through three distinct LCD panels to show the image in each given color. And then those are all combined and projected through the lens. That means no rainbow effect and typically better power efficiency. We've got an 18 gigabit HDMI 2.0. We've got serial control, LAN, VGA, because we've got a USB power port here that we can use to power our active HDMI cable. And the last noteworthy thing to talk about is mounting. This was a pre-loved media sample, so unfortunately it didn't come with a mounting plate. Fortunately, we have a Jake and a Colin and a pretty sick shop, and we were able to whip up a quick design and route out our own aluminum mounting adapter. Then we just need to attach that to our BenQ extendable ceiling mount, and boom, put the projector on it. That's super oh. upside down. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We just need to make sure we get the distance right, and according to Epson's projector calculator, our screen, not the wall, the screen needs to be at least 11.8 feet away. 11.8 feet? Great dimensions, right? 11.8 feet, how do you measure 0.8 of a foot? So fortunately, ceiling grids are a standard. This is two by four, so it makes it pretty easy for us to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, 12. 12 feet. Now, I was originally concerned when I lined it up here that the light, but I think we just put it on this side and just move the screen over an inch. It's 30 pounds. So what, we're just gonna mount it to the T-bar? No, the actual trusses that support the ceiling, yeah. if you look at the way that they're designed, it's kind of like a like a little edge on each side. Yeah. And I measured it out, so I went and bought some two by 10, and I was thinking we just cut it to that size and just, and just pretty freaking easy, right? Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we can worry about safety later. You ready? Here we go. I'm gonna let go now. Yeah, just put your wood in here. I've given you my wood, it's it's all in you. Wow, you're pretty, pretty good at handling wood. Oh yeah, I can't see a thing with that light in my eyes. <laughs> oh wow, that's really tight. <clears throat> I, ah! Look at that. Yeah. Okay, let's see if it's strong. What the hell? Oh. oh my. Oh no! Wow, that Beautiful. was really dumb. Don't worry, I got this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nobody could have saw that coming. Here we go. Okay. Oh. Boy, how heavy is that heavy? It's really not that heavy, so. Oh, shut up. Okay. Um. All right, now I have it. Can you reach? Well, look. Just get off the ladder. It's really heavy if you want to. Well, you told me it wasn't. Oh, I can't get it up. Oh, come on. Come on. Ow. Okay, let's try that. There's only a $30,000 OLED behind us. Oh, okay. Oh no. What? The power cord's over there and the plug's over here. No, it doesn't matter. It's going in the ceiling. Oh, it's a good thing that I didn't remove this in the UK because then it might have breaks it. Oh, there we go. So how come we didn't go with a gray screen? The problem with an ambient light rejecting screen is that the viewing angles aren't exactly fantastic always. Damn, Daniel. How far down does it go? I think that's good. That feels pretty good. OK, 
Okay, so you're on the screen? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're definitely good because I've got 12 feet to here. Oh, huh, nice! I think we'll take the mount plate and like put the rod on it just so we're getting that corner proper and then sort of mark it and then drill it. It works out to be just about right there. So just take the nuts off. Watch this, you're, you're, you're gonna love my nuts. <laughs> that was a bad joke. Uh, Jake, I need you back over here. I forgot my nut washer. I gotta put that on there. Cause what the Why hell was that? Why did you just let go of it? Why did you just... I was just trying to tilt it forward. <laughs> what even was that? Can you uh, grab my tiny nut here and twist? <laughs> what are we doing right now? They're parfait. So that should... Oh, okay. That Heavy projector, right? Do, do a few reps of that. Just... Oh. Do we need to access these bolts? I mean, once it's already in there, it's not going to matter. Or just leave it for now. Just, just, just... Like the mount separates from... That's what I was trying to say, is you can just pull it right out. <laughs> There's a reason we do the things we do. Oh, I just realized that the mount location is not necessarily the lens of the projector. Oh. We should do it on the other side. Let's do it on the other crap. side. Wrap. You're moving the thing so much every time. Should be fine. How's that in your eyes? Good. I love the screen size, but the mounting process is just so tedious. And this is even with a drop ceiling. This is your best case scenario. So wait, what? Do I just pop this on there? Hold on, I gotta put this on here first. Thanks, Jake. That's really helpful. We need the sound effects. Don't worry, I got this. He's a small man on a big ladder. Small man, big ladder. Episode three. Will he drop the projector? Uh, oh, God. I'll let it fall on me, honestly. Oh, God. The ladder's in the wrong spot. One really? Moment. Is the ladder in the way? Oh, my God. Hold on. No, no. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Is it on? I don't know. I I think it's on. Yeah, it's on, it's on, it's on. Okay. Wow, this is sick. Oh yeah, I'll turn it on. So this is what we're talking about, where if we didn't have lens shift, we basically have to go like this. But because we do, theoretically, we can just What the balls? That is so cool. I love optics. For you home cinema nerds, this is like, um, yeah, duh. But every projector in the last 20 years? Yeah. Okay, Jim. We were getting it all aligned and dialed in, and then I realized this is a 50-foot active optical HDMI cable from Infinite Cables, and all of that is pretty neat, except when you consider that it is HDMI 2.1 certified, so that makes it pretty freaking baller. This projector looks way better than the old one, just even on the patterns. Boy, is this not a light rejecting screen though. We're gonna have to go close those windows. Damn, Daniel, this thing pops. This is way brighter than the old projector. Oh yeah, for 100%. The old one was 3,000 lumens, but this is definitely way brighter. <laughs> and the colors look way more accurate. And we haven't even touched it. No, no calibration yet at all, but they're super rich. Every pixel on this thing looks so freaking sharp. Yeah. Like, damn, can you see that? All right, here we go. Everyone quick, get Yoshi. I'm Yoshi, screw you. <laughs> you piece of... I love how every single one of us has a 60 inch TV. See you later, buddy. I'm ready to get rubber banded. Oh, thanks for the blue shell, jackass! Oh, 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 nice! Oh, that was awesome! Right before the jump! This is freaking awesome. This was totally worth it. 100%. A few moments later. I just got sniped. I hate this game. I was in first the entire race. Very end, boom, fifth. Who's Villager? That's me. Oh, what? <laughs> GG, Nicole. Meanwhile, Sarah actually did end up beating me in spite of holding her controller here. <laughs> Not bad. You're not gonna get that same HDR sparkle that you would on like a QLED, but it looks damn good and it's huge. Damn. This is the best projector I've ever used. A lot of the time people watch our videos about projectors and like, why do people even care about projectors? You just get a TV. The size. Oh. It's just totally different. Oh Jesus, let me just ruin this for everybody. Wow, you're that guy in the theater right now. Yep. So big shout out to East Porter Audio Video, Infinite Cables, Clip, sure, they sent the speakers for Lounge V1, but we're still using them, they're still awesome. And of course, Epson, thanks for sending over the sweet projector hookup. I am so ready for movie nights to yeah. continue. Almost there, just need one more jab. Oh, just like you guys need one more message from our sponsor, FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the easy to use accounting software designed specifically with you in mind, the small business owner. It's easy to use and has built-in automation so you'll spend less time tracking projects and more time doing what matters most, which is growing your business. So whether you're a tradesperson, creative agency, or YouTube, they've got a plan that's right for you. And if you have trouble, they have award-winning Toronto-based customer support that is always happy to help you if you need it. So try FreshBooks for free for 30 days 
today. No credit card required at freshbooks.com slash Linus. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe go check out the Epic Vision video that we did. I swear to you guys, as much as it looks like a TV, it's a projector.